Hi everyone, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm here today with a bit of a renovation or makeover video, I suppose, um, because I have just painted my kitchen cupboards um, and kitchen drawers or kitchen units, whatever you want to call it. So I thought I would share with you um, how I did it and also the process and let you know whether I think it's advisable or not, because um, this is something that I wasn't sure about um, taking on because I've read all sorts of different things and seen all different um, videos on YouTube um, about doing this and um, it looked like quite an effort. Well, it was quite an effort, but I'll talk you through it anyway um, and you can decide yourselves if it's something that you might want to try um, and do yourselves. Um, so hopefully this video will be useful to you if you are considering painting your kitchen units. So um, I decided the other week that I would do this um, as a little project. Um, the reason being, I really didn't like the colour of our kitchen cupboards as they were. They were this kind of ash, birch effect, um, laminate, and uh, not for me. Nothing wrong with those. If you've got those, I don't mean any offence by that. They just didn't look right. I didn't like them. So I picked up this paint in Wilco's, and this is furniture and cupboard paint. So um, it is designed for this. It's not gloss or anything like that. It's specific. Um, so I picked up the paint and I picked up the primer and I'm slightly obsessed with painting things in our flat grey at the minute, there's loads of grey going on everywhere. Um, I think you can't go wrong with a bit of grey to be honest with you. What I would say is that the colour, if you hold it up against the um, farrow and ball paint chart, if um, you know your paints, um, it is almost identical to um, Manor House grey. So um, if, if you want to sort of get an idea of the, the shade of grey it's going to come out, it is pretty much identical. I don't know whether to show you guys a before and after shot now or not. I don't know whether to wait, make you wait till the end of the video to see it finished, because otherwise you'll probably switch off. I don't know, will you? Hmm. Um, okay, well, let's pop a quick one in. This is before. And this is after. I hope that you think that's an improvement. I hope you don't think that it looks worse, um, let me know in the comments. Anyway, I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Um, so let's talk you through the process. So the first thing I did was remove all the handles from all the cupboard doors and all the drawers using a drill just to make it a little bit quicker and a screwdriver as well for the ones that were a bit tricky to access. Then I went on to clean the entire kitchen with a sugar soap solution. So sugar soap is a kind of, I guess it's like a detergent, it's really good for removing grease and things. So if you're painting anywhere really, you should probably be using this. If you're painting walls, anything, you spray it on or you can mix it in with some water and just get a sponge and wash, wash away the grease and grime and everything. Particularly paying attention to around the cooker and anything that's kind of above things where you wouldn't normally wipe it is absolutely gross. Take a look at the cloth, yuck, um, yep, but mm, you know, who cleans up there on a regular basis? Not me, I can tell you that. The next stage is to sand it all down. So you need to um, make the surface more grippy. I've used these angled sanding pads. So they're kind of like a foam pad with sandpaper all over them. But the good thing about these is they're angled. So you can get sort of in and behind corners and things. So I'd really recommend those if you're doing any sort of sanding projects. If you've got a flat edge, you can't, and you're trying to get into a corner, it kind of blocks it. So that, that, that pointy bit on each side is really, really useful. Especially if, like me, you've been a little bit lazy and you haven't taken all the doors off. A, I thought it would be a big hassle and to, you know, take them all off, put them back on. And B, I didn't really have the space um, to lay out all the doors to paint them in my flat. It did actually work okay. So if you're thinking of, um, if that's what's putting you off, not painting your cupboard doors, the thought of pulling everything off and putting it back on again, you don't have to. Um, it, it was fine. The next thing I did was uh, mask off any areas that I didn't want to get paint on and cover all the uh, kitchen worktops with extra large 
dust sheets, plastic dust sheets that you can pick up in any DIY shop and I put a tarpauling down on the floor to protect the floor. And then I went on to the priming and I'm putting it on with an angled brush and a good quality roller. I say a good quality roller because if you get a cheap roller it's going to start to um, shrink with the paint and then when you're putting it on it's going to be uneven so one side might be more painty than the other side so definitely just spend a little bit more money on your roller um, and also your paintbrush because you don't want a paintbrush that's going to be molting and leaving hairs all over it so make sure you get doesn't have to be really really expensive but just make sure that when you feel your roller it's got some uh, firmness to it and and check the paintbrush isn't one of those horrible cheap ones that's got hairs going all over the shop because that is just going to be um, making for a really messy finish so with those I just started to apply the primer and it went on really nicely. I applied quite a thin layer because you want to have a really even coat um, as your base. If you do see any little bumps and lumps just pick them off or you can sand them off um, and just get rid of all of those. Another little tip for you guys is if you've got any awkward areas that you don't want to get paint on such as the door handles. I couldn't get all of the door handles off because of the way the doors are uh, the drawers are constructed so um, my tip is to use some tin foil because you can just scrunch it on and it molds into shape it's going to protect it from any paint and it's really easy to pull off again afterwards you're not going to be left with any sticky residue that you would be left with from things like masking tape I'd also use um, tin foil to line my painting tray um, so that when you finish painting you can just pull the tin foil out and chuck it in the bin and your painting tray is still good for the next day and I also use tin foil to wrap around the roller and the brushes because again you can just get it really tight and scrunch it on to um, make sure that it's airtight. So then on to the painting. Having left the primer to dry overnight I started painting the cupboard doors. One technique I did use was to um, just to keep all the doors closed paint across all of the fronts, um, let that dry a bit and then go around and do all the edges either with the roller or with the brush. I found that using the roller is definitely the best thing so the roller just um, put it on really nicely, um, you just keep going until you smooth out all the bumps and any streaks. So once the paint had dried I gave it a second coat just to go over any areas that I thought um, some of the white was still showing through. I think it looks really smooth. I think it almost looks like it could have been sprayed. It's it's so good and it's really resistant. So I've already done a little test. Now it's dry where I've just sort of scratched at it a bit with a, the edge of a fork and it hasn't scratched it. Um, so I think it's going to be really durable. It's a nice um, in between it's not too dark and it's not too light it's got some bluey tones in it so it works really well in daylight so throughout the day it becomes a lot lighter and brighter um, which I think is good for a kitchen and in the evening all that grey kind of comes becomes a little bit darker so if you want to just switch on the, uh, the odd lamp or whatever it's all going to become a bit more intimate and I think it looks really good so I would recommend giving this a go if A you've got the time and B um, you've got the patience So because it is a bit fiddly and there's a few stages to it but overall I did it in three days and on each of those days I probably spent two to three hours max so it wasn't like I was spending all day every day doing it so I'd say all in all it probably took about eight hours maybe probably with all the you know putting things away and getting things out and all the rest of it um, so yeah I would recommend this paint and I would recommend um, painting your cupboard doors if you want to uh, give your kitchen a quick refresh Thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's inspired some of you to do a similar project. If you do, don't forget to let me know how you get on in the comments below. Um, please hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up to date with my videos. I'm going to be doing more DIY and renovation related videos as well as loads of other stuff so do um, hit subscribe if you want to check those out and hopefully I'll see you here again very soon. Bye!